everybody, it's Wendy, and today I'm here with Jesse James Beads, and we are going to unbox the Let's Be Mermaids Coral Queen collection, and we're going to make a pretty little adjustable bracelet with it. Um, so our encouraging word for today is diamonds are made under pressure. So think about that for a minute. All right, so Let's Be Mermaids. We're just going to open this up and check out what's in it, and I'll show you what we're going to use for our bracelet. So we have these really, really pretty little mermaid tails. Now they don't come with the jump rings on them. I've put the jump rings on them already. Um, I tried filming this bracelet once already. <laughs> messed it up, messed the whole film up, <laughs> the whole video up, and now I'm refilming. <laughs> so uh, there you have it. So we've got some jump rings on there, but just ignore them. But these are the cute little mermaid tails. I think these are so adorable. Really, really pretty. We have these uh, drop beads that have a really pretty luster finish on them. I guess they're not drops. They're, they're just kind of oblong. They are drops, I guess. I don't know. They could be. They could not be. However you want to use them. <laughs> um, we have some larger rondelles. Really pretty sparkly. Larger glass rondelles. We have these cage beads that have got a couple other beads in them. There we go. Really pretty. I love these right here, these pave um, rhinestone beads. They are so beautiful. I love these little starfish. They're so cute. Look at them. Okay, we've got really pretty little charms. So again, we've got <laughs> our, uh, our little jump rings on there from my previous adventure in trying to film this and just ignore them. Yours won't come with jump rings. You'll have to add your own, but that's okay. There they are. Whole collection of little charms. Then we have this big charm. I love this guy, this focal piece. Okay, um, we have some mermaid glass. So, so pretty. Uh, we've got a lot of little rhinestone beads in this one. I love the sparkle. And these rhinestone beads, they're so pretty. There those are. We have some rhinestone rondelle spacers. A larger size and a smaller size here. We've got some gold metal spacer beads. We have some more um, rondelles. And then we've got this cat's eye looking peach colored. Look at that, so pretty. And then we have some little pink glass beads. Okay, so on our bracelet today, we're going to be using the four mermaid tails, the cat's eye glass, the um, bigger rhinestone rondelle spacers, the uh, rhinestone beads here, all of them, the mermaid glass, the four starfish beads, all of the charms and the focal and all four of these little rondelles okay everything else we're going to save for a later project okay so i'm just going to put these back in the box we're also going to be using for this project these hishi beads these are shell hishi beads these actually came in the magical mystery bead box but they do have them on their website Okay, so there's those. We are going to be using some one millimeter leather and some E6000 glue. Okay, and we're going to be using a couple of crimp tubes. Here they are. I knew I had them out somewhere. A couple of crimp tubes and a couple of crimp covers. Now, the crimp covers that I'm using are kind of large for this project, for what I'm wanting to do with them. Um, but the smaller ones did not work. So I'm going to try these and see if they work. If they don't, then we just will leave them off. It's not a big deal. But if they will work, I'm going to try to use them. And if I could find another matching one, these are rose gold crimp covers. And the, they are... Um, tangled up within each other here. Let me see if I can get them apart. 
They are really tangled up within each other. There we go. Okay, so these are two by two crimp tubes, and these crimp bead covers are just a larger size. Um, I'm not sure what size they are. They're big. They're too big for the two by two crimp tubes, but I'm hoping if I put some um, E6000 in there that they'll work. If not, we just won't use them, but we're going to give it a try. You'll see here in a minute what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to get my leather. I'm going to cut about 12, 16 inches off of this leather probably um, because I want to have enough to tie my knots at the end as well. So you're going to need about a 16 inch piece and then you're going to need about an 8 inch piece. So let me grab. It's wanting to knot up on me. <laughs> Okay, so about a 16 inch piece and then another piece about, I don't know, 8 to 10 inches. Okay, we're going to set that piece aside. Now the first thing we're going to do is just put on all of our beads and charms. I don't know how I got those gold beads in there. They're not supposed to be. Okay. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my Hishi beads and I'm just going to put two or three on here. Now these will go on this one millimeter leather, but you may have to take your, um, cut your scissors and cut it to a point. It makes it a little easier if you do that. See how that made it so much easier. <laughs> okay. Well, that one may not go on. It might be too skinny. No, it's going. It's just a little tight fit. That's okay. And I'm just going to string on three here to start. I'm just going to pull them all the way down to, I don't know, I'm leaving about a five inch tail there probably. And then let's see what do I want to do next. I think I will do one of these little orange beads next. And I may go ahead and put my bead bug on here just to keep him from, just to keep these beads from coming off this other end because I'm really, really bad about that and them falling off. <laughs> okay, so I'll just put a little bead bug on there. Um, okay, now let's see. I think I will do a rhinestone rondelle and one of these really pretty glass faceted rondelles. And then I'm going to put one of my mermaid tails on. And I've actually hung the mermaid tail. I'm sorry, I did not mention you were going to need jump rings. You will need jump rings. I've used a 6 millimeter jump ring and a 4 millimeter jump ring. And I'm just hanging him straight onto the leather. That's just going to make him hang down a little bit. Um, I'm going to use a piece of this mermaid glass. This uh, mermaid glass bead right here. And let's see, let's go with a, a really pretty um, rhinestone bead. And then I'm going to hang, which one do I want to do next? I think I'm going to do this guy. Now this one I have actually hung on a 4 millimeter, a 6 millimeter, and two other 4 millimeter jump rings. And you want to make sure when you put this on that he is facing the correct direction. So hang up, hang it up, pick it up and make sure that it's facing the right way. When it lays down, it may twist, but you just want it to be hanging the right way when you're holding it up, because that's how it'll be when you're wearing it. And then I'm gonna put on three Hishi beads. Okay, just like that. Now, um, let's see, I think I will do a star, well, I don't wanna do him right next to the Hishi beads, they're the same color. So, what do I wanna do now? Let's go ahead and do another one of these guys. And then we'll do the starfish bead. Okay, just like that. Then I am going to do this starfish charm and he's hanging on one six millimeter um, jump ring. So just hang him right on there. I think I will do a piece of the, or one of these mermaid glass beads, then one of these bigger rhinestone beads. These are so pretty. Then I'm going to put my big, I think I'm going to do him next, yeah, my bigger charm, and I'm just going to put him directly onto 
the leather. Yeah, that's good. Actually, I may put a couple of the Heishi beads on here. I think I will before I put him on. I'm just going to do two or three of these little Heishi beads. Okay, there's a couple. Now I'm going to put him on. Okay, now I've got about, this should be probably about three inches on here, maybe a little bit more. My wrist is small, so I don't want to put too much on, so I'm going to measure. Yeah, it's right about three inches. So I'm going to start going back the other way with my same pattern. So I'm going to do two of the Heishi beads. That one doesn't want to go on. Find a different one. Some of them have bigger holes than others. There we go. So two of these guys. Then I'm going to do the bigger rhinestone bead. Okay, the mermaid glass bead. The starfish charm. The starfish bead. The rondelle. Three Heishi beads. I think this is the one I had a minute ago that wouldn't go on there. Yeah, let's move him to the side. He's being difficult. Okay, so one, two, and three. Okay. Then our little shell charm. Okay. Um, and then we've got one of these rhinestone beads. Another Mermaid glass bead, another mermaid tail, this pretty rondelle, the rhinestone rondelle spacer, the peach cat's eye bead, and three of the Heishi beads. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to check this out and make sure, I'll take my rubber band off my wrist, <laughs> make sure that this is going to fit around my wrist, you know, that it's got enough beads on it to go around. So I'm just going to hold it up here, and it actually, I could use a few more. I might do, um... I don't know though, because I want there to be enough room for the closure too. So I'm going to leave it like this with about a half an inch left um, around my wrist with no beads. So if I hold this up, you can see there's about a half an inch there that I could bead if I wanted to. But I'm going to leave it like this because I, you'll see here in a minute how we want to do the closure. Okay, so I'm going to take these beads and just get them out of the way. I don't need a bunch of extra stuff here on my on my bead mat. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this down a little. So we've got a little bit of room on each side. And I'm going to take these two pieces of leather and I'm just going to overlap them right here. And I'm going to lay them underneath the charms on either side. And that's mainly just to get them out of my way so they're not in the way here when I get ready to do this closure. Okay, so just overlap them. Try to do it kind of evenly, just like that. Then you're going to need your other piece of leather, your 8-inch piece. What did I do with mine? Is this it? I feel like, yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Now, we're going to take this piece and we're going to put it underneath these two, okay? And find the middle. Actually, I'm going to make sure that that's the long... I feel like that should be a little bit longer. 
Maybe I should be using this one. Probably not. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. <laughs> okay. So we're going underneath and you just want to kind of find the middle. It doesn't have to be exact, but close. Okay. So what we're going to do now, so we've got this one piece of leather underneath these two that are laying side by side. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take this guy and make a little loop here. So just crossing him, he's underneath on this side. He's going to go above on this side, above these two pieces right here. Then we're going to take this other tail piece, okay, and we're going to go underneath that piece that we just crossed over the two here. We're going under it and on, no, I'm sorry, we're going, yes, we're going under it and then on under those two and up through the loop. Okay, and then when we pull, it's going to make a little knot on top. I have to think about it every time I do it. <laughs> okay, so that was our bottom piece. Now we're gonna alternate it and do the top. So we're doing the same thing. We're making the little loop from the top. It's going over top of these two pieces. Okay, then we're gonna take the tail. We're gonna go under the little tail of the one above that's coming down and up through the loop that we just made and then we'll pull. Okay, and what it's doing is it's making some square knots and you wanna pull them pretty tight, okay? Now, one thing to remember when we do this bracelet, we'll check it here in a minute, but you want this, this has to be able to fit over the fattest part of your hand, okay? So now we're down at the bottom again, okay? We're going to go, we're gonna make our little loop. We're gonna take this guy and go under him and up through the loop we just made and pull tight. And just pull your leather tight. Okay, now we're at the top. So again, making our loop, taking this and going under this guy and back up through the loop. Okay. And you can do that as many times as you want. So we're back at the top. I'm going to do it a couple more times. So I'm going over and then under and through. Just like that. Pull it tight. Bottom, under, and through. Okay. And I'm just pulling it tight each time. Top. And the bottom. And if you lose it, if you mess it up, just, you know, I take it right back apart and do it again. This is one of those techniques that every time I do it, <laughs> I have to relearn it. I don't know why, but I have the hardest time remembering how to do these knots every time. So if I do this again tomorrow, I will have to relearn the whole thing over again. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so here's our little knot. Now, these will slide through it, these two bottom you don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to, you know, just be gentle. And it'll loosen up a little as you wear it too. But what you have to do now is you have to make sure that this will fit over the widest part of your hand. And you don't want it to be too big. So I'm going to pull it in just a little. Okay. But it has to be able to fit like this over the widest part of my hand and then come up here and then pull tight. Okay. So right about there seems pretty good or it fitting over the widest part of my hand. Now I may do one or two more of these knots just to, I like to have more rather than less, just to be sure that they're going to stay. Okay, so one more there, and then 
can't remember if I just did the top or the bottom. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you want to try to alternate them, but if you ended up doing the same one over and over and over, all it would do is make like a twisty knot. It's, it's kind of cool, actually, when you do that, but um, I'm going to stop at that. All right, so now um, these little, we've got these little pieces right here that if you had a nylon cord or something like that, you could just burn them with a lighter and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But I don't really trust it, <laughs> okay? Um, without, I don't want to burn this, obviously. Hold on, I've got to plug my thumb in. It's going to die. Um, I don't really want to burn it, obviously, because it's leather. I don't feel like that would work really well. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to take some crimp beads and crimp bead covers and I'm going to put them on here gently. Now, you don't want to put the crimp on and smash it down too tight or it will cut your leather, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a small knot here, just an overhand knot at the end of my piece. Now you could just leave this knot if you wanted and then cut it off. But I'm just gonna do a little knot there, just like that. Same thing on the other side. And I just pull it all the way up to a little slide there and pull tight, okay? Now, I'm gonna take my crimp bead and you're gonna need your glue here, so let me, if I take the lid off this, it immediately just starts flowing out on its own, <laughs> so. But I'm gonna take my crimp bead and I'm just going to slide it up on here all the way to the top of it. And then I'm just gonna take my flat nose pliers or chain nose pliers and I'm gonna gently crimp it down. I don't wanna do it too tight because it'll cut your leather if you're not careful. So I'm just doing just like that, okay? It's not super tight. I mean, I don't think it'll really slide, but it's not tight enough or hard enough down to where it's going to cut my leather. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Just like this. And same thing, gently. Smash it down a little. Now, I'm going to take my crimp bead covers. I am going to put some glue on this crimp. And you totally do not have to do it this way if you don't want to. This is just my own. I just feel like it's going to make it a lot more secure if I do it this way. And that knot won't come out. But if you don't like the look of it. Okay, so I'm just going to take the cover and put it right over this crimp bead. Sometimes it's easier to do it with your fingers than it is with the pliers. And now I've got glue stuck all over me. <laughs> Oh, I'm such a messy, messy person when it comes to stuff like this. Okay, so it's on there. I'm just going to try to get my plier here and close it up. There we go, just like that. Okay, same thing on the other side. And you totally don't have to do this. I just feel like that it, you could just use the glue if you wanted. I just feel like that it gives it a little bit more security. Okay, I'm going to put this one over here. And you want to get it right over that crimp bead if you can. There we go. And then just take the plier. Close it right up. These are like little Pac-Man. You gotta kind of press them down there. Okay, so there they are. It just gives a little uh, beady looking detail. 
Now, you can make another knot if you want to. I think I will, just to be safe, because, like I said, I'm paranoid. So I'm just going to make another tiny knot on the other side of it. Just like that. And then I'm just going to cut it off. Same thing on the other side. This one wasn't as long. <laughs> it's a little harder to get the knot to go to go through there, but Okay. And just trim it off. And if you want, you could even put some more glue on this little knot. I'm not going to. I think it'll be okay. So there is our little slide connection. Okay. Now this part here, let me open that just a little to make sure that they're even. Okay. So this part here, we're just going to take a couple of beads. I did put them away, didn't I? I think I'm going to use the little cat's eye beads. I think those are so cute. And I'm just going to feed one on each side. And I'm leaving a little extra room here because you want to, uh, actually I'm going to take him off for a second. You want to make sure, so it slides over the biggest part of my hand. And then when I pull on both of these, it will slide closed when it's on me. Okay, but you want to make sure that you have the room here um, to get it on. So... You have to have that open a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a knot right about, I'm going to come down about this far and make a knot. And this really does depend upon the size of your own wrist, okay? So I know that I'm probably going to need that much on each side to slide open and closed. So I'm going to put that little knot there. I am going to put my bead on and make one more little knot on the other side of the bead. I've got glue all over my fingers. <laughs> it's hard to do anything with that. Okay, so just put this little knot right there. Pull tight on both of them. And then just trim this guy off right here. Okay, same thing on the other side. Oops, I'm going to make my knot first. I did forget to do that every time. Okay, put him right through here. down just a little right about there put our bead through and one more knot here on the other side okay and trim it off and that is our little adjustable bracelet. So you put it on, and it's kind of hard to do one-handed. I can do it one-handed, but you just kind of grab your slide closure and pull this with your other hand, or with, yeah, your other hand, and then you're going to grab this one with your slide closure and pull kind of like this. It is a little fiddly to get on, but you can do it. Or you can do this and try to kind of pull it like this. I have a hard time by myself. You kind of need maybe to get somebody to help you if you're as clumsy as me. But some people can do it. There we go. I'm just not very coordinated that way. And there you have it. So there is our little bracelet it's very um, dangly, has a lot of the cute little charms on and the mermaid tails. And then we've got our little, I like these that hang down. I think they're kind of cute in the back. So that is my way of doing the slide closure. Now, again, if we had nylon cord that you could melt, um, I would probably do that instead of the crimps and covers. But I feel like that's a pretty good alternative right there. Um, it doesn't look bad. I've got this one. I need to close him up a little better, but it doesn't look bad. And, um, I mean, it's kind of decorative and I feel like it's a little bit more 
secure than just tying a knot and putting glue on it. But again, it's totally personal preference. You can do it however you want to. But there is our little charm bracelet, and I think it turns out super cute. It is adjustable, so just about anybody could wear it. Um, and yeah, so that's the cute little mermaid kit, Coral Queen from Jesse James Beads. They also have the Siren Kit, and there's another one too. I can't think of the name of it right off the top of my head. But anyway, I will have links for this kit and all of these items in the description box below the video so you guys can check it out. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!